Hey folks, how's it going? I'm Lexi and I really like tabletop role-playing games. So much so that every week here on the gaming table, I review a new tabletop role-playing game. So if that interests you, I encourage you to subscribe and keep watching today's video. For this week's review, I have gone and borrowed another game from a friend to review. One of the things I love about tabletop role-playing games is how easy it is to share games with one another. However, if you want to see me buying more tabletop games, I'll put a link to my coffee page so that you can donate to what we do here. It generally helps me print copies of games or get them ordered in. Australia can be tricky to get a game to. Today's tabletop role-playing game actually comes from a franchise that started as a board game. I featured the board game a long time ago on a video where I recommended board games for tabletop role-playing game enthusiasts. I am very excited to get into talking about this game. So let's dive into Root, the role-playing game. Root takes place in a forest that is at war. The vibe is somewhat medieval European, but with a few fantastical twists. Several different factions of animals are battling it out to win dominance over the forest. In this game, one faction first featured in the base base board game is the focus, the Vagabonds. This faction isn't an organised group, but more so a label for a collection of individuals. They tend to be dodging the main conflicts of war, trying to turn a profit or two, and generally they play many different sides in the war. The inhabitants of the woodlands are all animals, and some factions are dominated by one type of animal over the other. Most animals in this world travel from clearing to clearing through forest paths. The deep forested paths are where many animals will not venture, as they are filled with all sorts of dangerous animals and mysterious ruins from this world's past. This world has been through civil wars and more recently is trying to deal with an attempt to be colonised. Along with the different conflicting factions, there are also the denizens, the ordinary folk of the forest just trying to get by. Root uses a version of the Powered by the Apocalypse system. I've covered games that use this system before, so I'm pretty familiar with it. For most tests in the game, you're going to roll 2d6. You will then add the results together and apply the appropriate modifier. These modifiers generally range from a negative one to a plus two. These modifiers come from your attributes, which in this game are charm, cunning, finesse, luck, or might. A result of a six or below is a failure, a seven to nine is generally a failure with a condition of some kind, and a 10 onwards is a success. As a result of some successes, you might gain some future advantage in a roll or just an advantage in the game in general. To roll for a test, the players need to declare which move they are using. Moves cover a variety of actions in this game. Your general moves are things like attempt a roguish feat, figure someone out, persuade an NPC, read a tense situation, trick an NPC, trust fate, wreck something, help or interfere. I think these names give you a rough idea of what these moves can do. There are a lot more moves available in the game though, especially for conflict. They vary from trying to grapple another character to performing a trick shot. There's also moves for traveling in this game, either via something like a path or through the dense forest. The Vagabonds are unique as they are one of the few factions in this world that can travel through the dense forest. The path and the forest both have their advantages and drawbacks. Powered by the Apocalypse, by its nature, tends towards simplicity, but there are more moves in this game than other ones I have encountered. Especially there is a variety of moves for combat that tend to spend, there are a lot of variety for, there's a lot of variety, especially in the moves for combat, that center on the different weapons or the different skills or outcomes these characters are trying to achieve. Another really important mechanic in this game is reputation. Depending 
touching on your character's past interactions with members of different factions, they will have for each of those factions a different score. Vagabonds can be regarded on a scale to an enemy of a faction to a hero of the faction. Depending on your score with each faction, which is done using boxes you can colour in, you might be able to leverage different things from different members of each faction. Character creation in this game is done by first selecting a playbook. There's no single type of animal species that you have to pick and each playbook has a suggested variety of animals that might be useful for that playbook. In this game it's generally suggested that your character be at least amphibious. Fish might have a bit of a problem breathing on land and traveling through the forest. The playbooks in this game are the adventurer, the arbiter, the harrier, the ranger, the ronin, the scoundrel, the thief, the tinker and the vagrant. Each of these playbooks then comes with a set of traits that you can choose to use. You cannot select everything at once when you create your character. You get to select things like your weapon skills, a nature, what your drive is, connections, unique moves, and some background questions to answer. Each playbook comes with a variety of options, so it is possible for in a game for more than one player to choose the same playbook and have it not feel like you're overlapping too much on each other's skills. The game master in this game does not roll dice, unlike the players. Instead, they are given some guidelines on how they are suggested to run this game. The Game Master does also get moves. Depending on what the players are trying to do or the result of a die roll, the Game Master might make a hard or a soft move against them. Soft moves don't necessarily have severe or lasting consequences on the game. Hard moves generally are for when things go wrong or something unusual is going to happen. I, this manual actually has some great suggestions and guidelines on what the moves should be and how the game master can use them in a variety of situations. I haven't had the time to of course cover all the mechanics in the game. Roots mechanics are, Roots mechanics fundamentally are very simple. They just have some great building blocks on top of the basic moves for you to enjoy the game to its fullest. I think this is a really well crafted game. If you like Powered by the Apocalypse and you're looking for one with interesting combat that, this is absolutely one to check out. I also think the way mechanics are explained in this book are really straightforward and helps the player. I also think the way mechanics are explained in this game is really straightforward and easy to grasp onto. Also, the world of Root is just really cool and interesting. The art style of the game definitely reflects that. It is very adorable art, even when the animals are attacking each other. I do think fans of the original board game could really get into this tabletop role-playing game. Perhaps for some fans, the board game, this could be a great opportunity to try out a tabletop role-playing game. It takes a look of the world of Root from the perspective of the Vagabonds. If you don't know anything about the world of Root and you don't like board games or you don't want to play this board game, don't worry, you don't need to know anything about the original board game to enjoy this game either. If you like the idea of woodland animals battling it out, this is absolutely a game I would try have a look at. A copy of the core rulebook for Root is only $40 US, though there are a lot of tempting supplements out there. I do think with the basic core rulebook though, you can have a very fun, fulfilling game all by itself. I think the content of the base game definitely justifies its price. I already loved the board game route and I am not disappointed at all by this foray into tabletop games. If you wanted to make a character in Root, what kind of animal would you pick? For personal reasons, I will always go for some form of rodent, probably a rat, but let me know what you would pick in the comments down below. While you're there, I encourage you to like, subscribe, turn on notifications, or perhaps share this video with a friend. It all helps this channel get more notice. I also have a coffee page that I will link in my description that you can check out.
If you like, you can choose to donate to this channel, so instead of me bothering my friends to borrow their tabletop books, I can buy them for myself. Or you can just check out what I am up to. I hope you're all well, and I look forward to seeing you next time at the gaming table. Bye!